Good evening. Thanks very much for having me on tonight. Um, the title of our district assembly this year is A New Dawn. And A New Dawn is exactly how I see our youth projects. I've got a gift for all of you this evening. And it's a box and it's full of opportunity. And I want you to take that box, I want you to take that gift and I want you to spread it in your local area. Because while we do great work all over the country, all over the world, I think it's important that we also look to our local environment, our local community, and in particular, the next generations that are coming through our own young people. I'm entirely committed to this. Many of you have heard me speak before and know that for 30 years, I was a serving police officer in a sleepy little fishing village called Salford. And Salford's <clears throat> main export during the 1980s and 1990s was armed robbers. Now, it's, it's a sad fact that when I joined the police, I thought that I'd be stepping up and I'd be dealing with criminality and mainly dealing with adults and men. And when I sit back now after 30 years service and look back, I spent most of my time dealing with teenagers, with young people who for one reason or another have lost the way. And you think, why have they lost the way? And it's because at some point, somebody hasn't reached out to them and said, look, you could do this. You could do this instead of doing that. And this is a better way. You're not going to convince everybody. And I don't even expect to convince everybody. But do you know, if I can convince one or two, that will satisfy me. Now, I can't do this on my own. I want you to help to do it with me. And that's why I'm going to give you tonight this box full of opportunity. Take it back to your clubs, discuss it on Zoom. I'm going to go through the different projects that we can do. I'm not going to dwell on the past and what didn't work and what we couldn't deliver. I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward into Eric's year. I'm looking forward past that. I'm in a unique position. I'm a Rotarian who's actually doing the job that he wants to do. And there's not many of them, is there? So what have I got in my box full of opportunities for you? Well, it's, it's a new dawn. We've got to look at the way forward. James, could I have a slide, please? So the way forward, undoubtedly, the disruption of the past years has limited the service that we were able to offer to young people. We were there, we were on the blocks, we were ready to get going, but unfortunately, the vagaries of the COVID restrictions stopped us in our tracks. The schools closed, we couldn't get access to young people if we wanted to, our clubs closed. Uh, it took us a while to get back on our feet and to discover how to communicate within our own organisation. But we've achieved that, we've adapted. So let's turn, this, let's turn this round. We can do it. And I'm asking you to help me to deliver our competitions and projects across the district. The worst doing. James? <clears throat> we can do this if I can help you to discover what we have to offer in our district. Now, you need to know where to get these resources from for you to be able to deliver it to the young people or to the people who are managing where young people get together. So firstly, you'll need to obtain the guidance and application forms. You need to know where they are so that the young people can enter what we've got. Now they're going to be available to download from our district website, from the youth section. But again, I can't stress too much. All of this is an irrelevance. These things will exist only on a computer somewhere, unless you can enthuse somebody in your club, if it's not yourself, to grasp this and take it out there. Next, please, James. Rotary in Great Britain and Ireland have produced an excellent bookcase that showcases all the competitions and the projects that young people can get involved in. 
Now, what I've done is I've had this booklet scanned and I'm going to add it to the youth section of the district website. It's an excellent, um, an excellent product. And I think that if we can fire it off into schools and youth clubs and places where young people are, it's going to whet their appetite. It's going to give them a taste of what they can get involved in the old trade. How do you enter the competitions? Well, each competition has got a set of guidance notes and they detail what is required of the entrance. There's also an entry form which has got to be completed by your club because what that will do is it will link together your club and the young person. Now, at the moment, all of these are being updated at Ulster. They've been produced and are being carefully checked now to make sure that they comply with legislation um, discrimination laws, um, things like diversity, so that the finished product when it goes out is properly checked, it's accurate, and you shouldn't get any questions coming back to you. People should be able to look at it, accept it, and get on with it. What I would say is <laughs> it's important that you make sure that form is filled in correctly when it comes back to us, because hopefully, if we're successful at a club level with a competition, we can move it forward to a district level competition and if we're going to if they're having them we might be having regional competitions and from that we might even move on to a national competition but statistics are only any good and information is only any good if it's accurate when it's put in at the beginning james so let's have a look at what competition we've got out there um, i dare say with the passing of time and because you've not been involved in these, people will have forgotten what it is we can offer young people to do. Some of these are, uh, are ways in to vocational for their careers for the future. Some of them might just feature on the CV, but some people may even take them up. So Young Chef, this has previously been a very popular competition in our area. Ages 11 to 17, Rotary Young Chef competition gives entrance the chance to put their cooking skills to the test and to be judged by leading industry professionals. Um, they do mentoring and they offer guidance and to see them all working together when you go to the finals of the competition is excellent because you'll see they're all chefs, even though some of them are 14 year olds and some of them are at the top flight of their careers, they're all striving to do the same thing, the making food. It's great to see. The entrance plan and cook a three course meal, they develop the food presentation skills and they gain the experience in high pressure situations. And I've been in the kitchen while they're doing this and I didn't stay in. You know, like they say, you don't like the heat, get out of the kitchen. I did. If a young person is interested in a culinary career or just an enthusiastic home cook, this competition is a fantastic opportunity for them. And previously, we found a lot of talent out there. We have a district lead on this, who I've spoken to, Roger Shepherd. Roger can't wait to get back and start delivering this competition. So what you would do is you would find, you'd find it on the website, you would deliver it to a school, a youth club or a youth movement group. If somebody wants to get involved in it, get them to fill the form out and then get in contact with either myself or I'll put you in touch with Roger Shepherd, and we'll explain how you can make it happen. You're not going to take one of these competitions off the shelf and try and deliver it on your own. There's a back, there is a support network behind you. Young Musician Competition, uh, ages 11 to 17. Let's reach out and search for that musical talent in our district because it's there. Participants will get the chance to experience performing on a stage and receive feedback from experienced judges. Plus, it offers a great chance for them to collaborate with fellow musicians. The entrance can either be a vocalist or an instrumentalist. The competition is open for individuals. Now, I've been to the final for this as well. Uh, quite extraordinary. To me, they're already professionals when they turn out there. I listened to a 14 year old young man playing a trumpet. I, sat, I was sat in front of him and I could hear two trumpets. The technique was amazing. And a young lady arrived at the competition with a harp 
in a box, which was bigger than she was. James, the Young Writer competition. Now, some of these competitions need to be delivered in an area, such as young chef in a kitchen, young musician, they need to have a practice room, they need to have an auditorium to perform in. But look into the future, let's perceive that there might be a problem with COVID or restrictions or lockdowns. If we can become familiar with some of these competitions, there is no reason why they cannot be completed online. And Young Writer is a prime example of this. You could, run it, you could run a young writer's competition without ever needing to see another human being, apart from on a Zoom call or on the phone or by email. Let their imaginations of these young people go wild. Let them get creative, take part in the Rotary Young Writers competition. It offers the participants the opportunity to express themselves and get creative with the written word. What we do is we have a theme each year and the participants can take that theme and then they can choose to write about it in any manner that they wish. Fiction, non-fiction, poem, anything. And then we'll get it judged. We can have an in-club competition. You could have a schools competition. In the club competition, you could take the winner of it, send it to me and we can have a district competition if we get entrance from other schools and then we can run it up the ladder and see where we go but you need to get it out there. It's no good if it just exists on this laptop. The Young Artist Competition, ages seven to 17. Again, this could be done in the, by post, email, electronic transfer. It's, what I'm looking for is, the worst outcome is we have another lockdown. I don't want it to stop the competitions this time. I think by plotting and planning, we can work our way around it. Now that many of us are more familiar with using social media and Zoom platform. So the young painters, illustrators and artists showcase the creative flair to a wide audience to take part in this competition. They have to produce the original work and then it's up to us to run it in a competition and to compare it with other pieces and see what we can pick out of it to get a winner. So the participants have the opportunity to interpret the competition's annual theme again, and then however they want to interpret it, let the creativity go, send it down to us. I firmly believe that if this was introduced into a school, the school could run it up in their art class and perhaps in a couple of weeks, they could say, this is part of our art coursework, but let's put it into the Rotary competition. I think it's there. I think the product is already there. We just need to winkle it out. James? The Young Environmentalist. Uh, this is a new competition that's uh, developed. I think it's now in its second year, but in saying that, last year, a bit of a write-off. Possibly <clears throat> in response to a young lady from Sweden called Greta Thunberg. Only a young woman but determined, worried about the planet and look where she got. All the way across the globe, national newspapers, there's not many people have not heard of young Greta because young people are concerned about what the planet is like now, what it's gonna be like in the future. And of course they blame us for the mess it's in. But there we are. Ages seven to 17, it's possible to enter this competition as a team or as an individual. If they can come up with a clever way to protect the planet, they need to come up with a project or an action, an idea, but then get it into action. It's got to, you've got to make it happen. It's not just got to be an idea because part of the competition is in evaluating it and how it, to see how it helps our environment. And this, <clears throat> the construction of this competition is mimicking the way management exists now in industry and business. We come up with an idea, we put it into action, and then we draw it back and we evaluate it and we decide, did that work? Could it work better? Could we keep it or shall we bin it? Because that's the way we move these days. So within this competition, there are other levels. Now the participants may already be eco champions like young Greta Thunberg, or they might want to find out more about the world around them. 
it might just be interesting because something they've seen on the news, they've heard, they've spotted on social media. The competition is going to challenge them. They've got to use their change, they use their passion for changing and create lasting solutions to important environmental issues. Hit the news only this week, didn't it? That our plastic rubbish is now being burnt in Turkey. It's a, it's a global issue, this. James? The young filmmaker. Um, this competition is about four years old, and it's the response from Rotary in Ulster to young people by the fact that we've now got mobile phones everywhere, most of which have got the facility to take a film or a digital video images. So using either a mobile phone or a proper digital video camera, the participants are invited to write, edit and direct their own short film in this competition. The, as I understand it, it's been explained to me, the essence of making a film is a, is a grouping together of a number of components. It's the image itself, the theme, but very importantly, the editing. Because if anyone's ever been involved in any filming that goes on, you can spend half an hour taking a shot that might go on screen for 30 seconds. It's, it's an unusual industry. So this is, a, this is an opportunity for them to try that. We anticipate there are many young people out there with access to equipment that can enable them to take their ideas from concept to reality by producing a five minute short film based on their interpretation of the annual brief. Now, these are short notes for the purposes of this presentation. When I get the details back from Ulster, which the email means that we're just checking them through, so it should be within the next couple of weeks, the full details will be available to be read on the youth part of the district website. I'll be reading them as well, and I will be your first point of contact to uh, get the nitty gritty details out of it. Youth Speaks competition. This has been very popular in our district for some considerable time. Um, it's led by our district lead, Warren Hayes, who's moved heaven and earth. He, he has created this now as a non-face-to-face -face competition and he's running it this year uh, as a virtual competition. It took an enormous amount of effort by Warren to deliver this, but he is a district lead for this and he's absolutely dedicated into the value that this competition offers young people. Um, I'm very keen on it myself. When I was a young man, I was in the uh, debating competition at school several times and I find that it helps to build confidence. It helps you to be able to express yourself. In essence, it helps you to stand up and lead where others stand behind. So it's an opportunity for young people to express themselves verbally. It allows them to practice their public speaking abilities and inform an audience about a topic that is of concern or interest to them. It builds confidence, clarity and teamwork. There are many facets of this competition. It's Youth Speaks. This competition is unique to our district and a couple of other districts. It's the original Youth Speaks competition, which we have held on to because we recognise value in it. It's a team competition. It's not a matter of winning a debate. It's about youth speaking about the topic that matters to them. A team of three support each other by a chairperson introducing the team and the topic. Then the speaker delivers the topic to the audience. The chairperson invites questions to which the speaker will respond. And the third team member winds it up and offers a vote of thanks. Some of the topics, they can be both moving and insightful. To listen to a young lady who would be perhaps 15 or something, um, comprehensively discussing the benefit system as it affects her handicapped elder brother. You can't regard them as being children. They are young people. What they might lack is experience. What they don't lack is confidence and ability to express themselves. The different roles within this competition offer different opportunities for young people 
who have different levels of confidence to get themselves into a team and to stretch themselves. There was one young man on the team that I saw that virtually had to stand on an orange box to see over the table to give the vote of thanks at the end. I doubt that he would have played on a rugby team, but he was able to get on a Youth Speaks team. James? The Young Photographer Competition, I still managed to get a few entries for the Young Photographer Competition this year. Um, again, this is a competition which could be run entirely online or within a, within a school. Uh, so it's another one for the future. I'm preparing resilience <laughs> in case there's another lockdown. Who knows? Ages seven to 17, there are different levels within that that you'll be be able to read the detail in the competition guidelines. But again, it's because of the availability of mobile phones as well as digital cameras, there's so much opportunity for young people to participate in this competition. They're invited to submit a portfolio of three images on the annual theme. And we want to listen to what their motivation was for taking the image. It's not just a random snap snap, oh, that came out, all right, I'll throw that in. There's more to it. They need to state the type of device that's been used and they need to state what manipulation of the image they've made, if any. Now, these entries will be judged by a professional photographer. The guy that I've used this year has spent his entire career as a professional photographer. He was, in fact, a photographer's photographer of the year in 2011. And so we're very fortunate there because all these competitions that we have one of the one of the difficulties for us is finding people who are qualified, who are competent, and who are willing to judge them. Uh, a word of warning, I'll get it in now before I start getting the queries in the future. Make sure you fill the application form in accurately. Uh, I've had forms bouncing forwards and backwards in the past because of what type of camera was it? What focal length did you use? James, we have projects for young people. Not everything's a competition. The technology tournaments. Teams of pupils, typically in teams of four, have to solve an interactive technology-based task and are required to design, develop, and build a solution with the materials supplied. The tournament is available to two age groups, 8 to 11 and 11 to 16 and happily we've got experience of delivering this within our district. Perhaps utilising the booklet that I mentioned before we might be able to send it off into the schools let them have a look through it and some of the schools that might be technology based could be interested in participating in this competition. In essence what they will get is a cardboard box full of bits of polystyrene sticks, wheel strings, piece of string, sealing wax, etc. And they might have to build a bridge, build a crane, build a car that will travel a certain distance. And it's how they interpret the instructions and what they can deliver. James? Young Citizens Awards. Do you know somebody in your local district under 25 who is an inspiration to others? Do they go the extra mile to make a difference? Why not nominate them for a Rotary Young Citizens Award to celebrate that the impact they make within our local community? The awards can be for individuals or groups, for projects and initiatives that showcase positive citizenship and the important responsibilities that are assumed by some of our young people. The nominees do not have to be engaged on a Rotary project. Please make inquiries within your local area and discover if there is a worthy recipient out there that we can recognise. What I'm thinking about here is those unsung heroes which go across our country and those are our young carers. Young carers, do they ever get a break? Let's have a think about those. Um, I'm more than happy for you to contact me and discuss this in the future. Interact. Interact, age 12 to 18. Is this the nest bed for future Rotarians? We might hope so. Ages 12 to 18, Interact clubs are run by their members. 
so that they get to take part in exciting hands-on projects around the topics and causes that matter to them. Interact is a great way to enhance their CVs, which will be helpful when they're looking for jobs or making college and university applications in their futures. Each Interact Club is supported. It's supported, it's not run. It's supported by a local Rotary Club or a local Rotarian from that club. It will be there every step of the way to help provide help and experience in how to run meetings, in how to, uh, what a secretary's duties might be, in perhaps how to deliver a project. They should be our future. And what we need to, what we need to um, make sure we do in the future is keep in touch with our interactors because they will jump from being an interactor at 18 into university or further training and then start off on their careers. If we can stay in touch with them at some point in the future, they might want to come back into Rotary and to start helping us, our service organisation, using their new experiences. Rotary kids, we can really get them young now. Ages seven to 12. Rotary clubs are based in schools, youth groups or community centres with the help and support of their teachers, youth leaders and again guidance from a local Rotary club or motivated Rotarian. Children can gain a valuable experience in helping others and learning interesting new things. It is surprising what a child will rise to if they're given the opportunity. Um, have you seen the purple pinky? where you go into a school, you explain all about polio across the world and you ask them if they'd like to make a small donation and you dip the finger in a little pot food colouring, purple pinky. Kids love it, they will rise to it. This is a similar type of thing, but it's run like a club. Rotary Kids can bring an exciting and practical approach to supporting the citizenship element of the national curriculum. This can be a first point of contact for the parents to learn about Rotary and we can welcome them into our organisation. You need to get a contact within a primary school. So what's on hold? We can't ignore the fact that we've just had a pandemic. <clears throat> what's on hold? Currently due to the Covid restrictions we're not able to offer a district international summer camp. This is a pity because this district has held an international summer camp longer than anywhere else outside of London. Petty Pool, who are our provider for this event, cannot offer overnight accommodation, obviously because of the transmission, possible transmission problems. Rotary International will not facilitate international travel at this time, and our insurers cannot indemnify us, so the shutters down. Similarly, Ryla, the Rotary Young Leaders Award Scheme, is suspended for the moment, for the same reasons. However, Petty Pool is operating. We need to see what we can still get from Petty Pool because they're our service provider and I'm very satisfied that they give us good quality training. I'm meeting shortly with the new manager at Petty Pool, Jim Davy, to discuss our way forward with them. And that discussion is going to include course content, safeguarding and costs. The travel restrictions have also put pay to our international youth exchange programme for the present. But these, <clears throat> these things should change. So that's what we can't do at the moment. This is something that we can do. Urban kids go outdoors. They will only be visiting Petty Pool for the day. Urban Kids Go Outdoors provides children from disadvantaged backgrounds and others with a fun-filled visit to Petty Pool Outdoor Centre with the aim of inspiring and engaging participants outside of the classroom. I still run um, my own youth group and I mean I'm busy uh, delivering outdoor activities, sailing and kayaking to young people. I can't stress to you enough that we have many young people in our local areas that have never been off their estates. They have never seen a big tree. They have never seen a hill. We take kids down to Pennington Flash where I sail. It's a lake. It's a mile and a half long and half a mile wide. 
I can't begin to tell you how many children have been there and said, is that the sea? Because in 2021, we have got young people who have never been more than a mile from their estate for various reasons, which we travel the globe, don't we? But that's in your own backyard. Several Rotary Clubs in this district have previously sponsored classes of children to enjoy this day in the outdoors. They believe that this is a worthwhile and memorable opportunity that we can offer to primary school children. Urban Kids Go Outdoors at Petty Pool is still open for business. You've got to think that when you spend some money doing this, you put a memory in a child's mind that could stay there for life. James? Here's the plea. I need you to help me. I'm confident that our young people are worth the effort. Please check the youth section of the district website in the next few weeks when I've updated it with the new competition details. Please download the Rotary Youth Competitions booklet and send it to your local schools and clubs. We're fortunate that we have several Rotarians within our district who can lead each competition and they will help your club to deliver a competition. We need more Rotarians to help to promote and advertise our projects. This group of competitions, projects and awards is worthwhile. I've got them on this laptop here. I don't want them on this laptop. I want them on yours and I want you to send them, I want you to send them this gift, this box of opportunities to the schools. I want you to get it out there to the young people, our young people. If you're interested, please contact me. At some point, the restrictions will lift. I can't tell you how pleased I will be to come down to your club and to present to you, and bully you into doing it. Resilience. We've got to adapt or we're going to become extinct. When the schools were closed down, it virtually halted all of our competitions and programmes. I'm not going to let that happen again. With your help, we can revert to delivering competitions and youth projects by using social media by using email because we will be more experienced and we'll be ready for it. I suggest that we should start to spread our attentions beyond the schools. I've mentioned this before. I think that for too long we've been cherry picking. It's been too easy. I'll just pop down to the school, drop this at reception and they can ring me back and all the rest of it. We are already within our club support, supporting cups, Scouts, guides, football teams, boxing clubs, judo clubs, all sorts of, wherever young people are gathering, contact the adult leaders and present them with our box of opportunities and say, could you use any of these? Could these supplement or enhance what you're already delivering to young people? Because maybe, They've got a programme where they want to go out and play football one night. Everybody's turned up, nothing's happening, the weather's bad. Oh, I'll tell you what we can do. We'll have a go at one of these competitions. Give them the rules and all the rest of it, take it away, fire it back to us. They can have their own in-house competition. There is no rule that says that entries have to come from a school at all. Let's get the message out there to young people, not schools, young people, wherever they are. Finally. Finally, do you think that your club can get involved in any of these competitions and programmes? Do you think there's one Rotarian in your club who would send me an email and say, go on, Tony, send me the link. I'm a bit interested in this. We might be able to get something into a school or a youth club. And we'll go from there. I strongly believe that our young people are worthy of the investment and they will give us great returns in the future. I just need you to help me open the doors to get in there and give them what we've got because it's not costing us anything and it could be a great value to them so there's the only email that you will need it will be available because all this presentation is available after the meeting and fire it off to me so thank you for listening thank you tony i'm really glad you're giving out with your box because there's so much stuff that we need a big box to take it all home with them so masses of information there opportunities by the box full literally so 
I'm sure that there must be something in that comprehensive list that every club wants to get involved in. I've certainly got some ideas for our club in Warrington. So, yeah. And also, your passion for youth just came through all of that. So, like, you've got us all fired up now. You've certainly got me fired up to go off and do stuff. So, thank you very much for that. That was really, really great, interesting. And I'm sure, I'm sure that we won't have remembered all of it, which is why we need to go back and look at it on the district website later. Um, if anyone wants to watch it again, we are recording this that will be available on YouTube later. So thank you, Tony. That was absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm.